it's a nice dry early autumn's morning and I'm just setting a height up here at the edge of a stubble field that's probably been cut for two three weeks now. I have tried decoying pigeons on the field before but it didn't really go well for me. I shot one or two birds but that was about it. One of the mishaps I had was the framework and the little bush chair hide that I have used for must be 78 years or more now. Well that broke at one of the joints so that wasn't a really good start. Oh and if you don't want to hear me waffle on about the hide and the setup and so on fast forward to about the seventh minute to get into the action. But as I was saying I wasn't really that annoyed at the time as as I said I got 78 years out of it uh, using it in all sorts of conditions and all sorts of places and uh, it really doesn't owe me any money at the end of the day but the canvas is still good on it so I might look at actually replacing the chair with another one and see if that works for me but anyway back to uh, the video today so the hide you've been watching me set up is actually the double bush chair hide from Bushware I, th that's, I think that's the right pronunciation I have been toying with the idea for a long time of actually buying one of the double hides because I wanted a wee bit more room inside. Now the single hide I managed with it and if all you're doing is shooting the single hide is big enough but I want to fit a tripod and a camera in with me so the double hide gives you a bit more room. Now initially I was worried that the double chair hide would be too big as it's designed for two people hence the name and that it would be too difficult to uh, disguise it or get it to blend into the hedge row behind but as you can see with the use of uh, I think it's a five meter stealth camo net which I've woven some raffia and dry grass into it blends into the hedge row quite well it is noticeably heavier to lug about than the single bush hide but then there's a lot more metal work and material to it though it does seem to fit in a similar sized uh, carry bag to the single bush chair hide. One thing I have noticed is that the hide uh, seems a little more stable when you have it set up unlike the single bush chair hide which had a tendency to topple forward when you were trying to climb out of it probably due to the extra weight but anyway enough about the hide and um, we'll get on to what I'm actually doing at the minute okay I've got the hide built I've got my rifle ammunition and magazine into the hide I'm using my uh, 0.22 caliber 30 plus foot pounds the open MFR I don't usually use the MFR for this sort of thing because it's got quite a long barrel on it and it makes it awkward working inside um, a hide or a compact area so this will be a good trial to see whether the extra room comes in handy. The bag I'm using is a Northern Ireland um, day pack and uh, I've modified it a little adding a few extra pouches onto it so I can put extra wee bits and pieces and they're easy to get to without having to open the main compartment and rummage around in it. I've used quite a few different bags over the years for this sort of thing and I really like this little uh, backpack and I use the bigger brother to this the 100 liter for uh, pigeon decoying I'm using a dead rabbit as a bait as you can see. I'm sure there's plenty of times you've been driving along the road in the mornings and you've seen a crow or a magpie pecking away at a rabbit that's been run over by a car so they're used to seeing a dead rabbit and feeding on them. I also have a uh, dead magpie that's been in the fridge quite a while and I set it up in a little wire cradle beside it uh, to act as a decoy. I haven't used a plastic magpie decoy for a long time. Um, they're 
just don't look realistic enough for me. Sure enough, if you don't have a dead bird to use as a decoy, the plastic one is probably your best alternative, or just use the bait itself, but with a dead bird beside it, it attracts the birds um, even quicker. And if they don't come down to feeding the rabbit, they may well come down to chase a strange magpie off of their territory. So it has a double attraction to it. Once I have my bait set out and my decoy, I get myself back into the hide and I put my face veil on as it helps stop the birds spot any white flashes of skin through the hole in the camo net that I am shooting through. Then I get the rifle and all set up. Um, this is where it's difficult in the smaller hide as the longer barrel on the MFR, you have to sort of position the gun that you can push the whole barrel out through the net and then um, bring it up onto your shoulder to try and get it onto the shooting sticks but once you're there um, it'll sit for hours sort of nudging into your shoulder and ready to bring on target and take a shot. I make sure the magazine's loaded before slotting it into the rifle and uh, loading a round into the chamber ready to go. I'm using 0.22 Bisley Magnum pellets in this gun which is zeroed for 40 yards um, which is the same distance I've set the bait and the decoy magpie out. That was probably half an hour or more before the first bird arrived. I should have made more of the opportunity at the time but I was pretty sure there was a lot of birds on this field and I wanted them to get a wee bit of confidence in the bait and the decoy before I started shooting. But I probably should have taken the first opportunity when it was presented to me. But he didn't really stick around for too long. Now it probably was the best part of an hour before another opportunity presented itself and after waiting so long I decided that uh, I was going to make the best of the opportunity as uh, I didn't want to be sitting too much longer. So as the birds started feeding I got the rifle to my shoulder looking for uh, a good steady opportunity at uh, a vital area. This time with this gun at this sort of range I decided to go for a heart and lung shot. I got a good solid strike and the bird went about 2-3 yards to the left before dropping dead in the stubble. After a bit more of a wait another bird arrived. He seemed more interested in the dead rabbit than he did his dead mate lying a few yards to the left and when he turned broadside I got another heart and lung shot and again he ran off camera a few yards to the right and dropped dead. I'm not quite sure how long it took before the next opportunity arrived as I'd actually forgotten my phone and I didn't have a watch on me and I was actually looking at how long the battery was lasting in the camcorder to give me an idea of time. But this bird landed about 45 yards away. Now I could have taken him with the MFR but I was hoping he'd come a wee bit closer um, for the camera. The same distance roughly as the, the other birds, about 40 yards. But as you can see he dandered off into the long grass and I lost my opportunity as I couldn't get a heart and lung shot off at him. Again another bit of a wait and uh, another magpie arrived. This time he landed at a distance and then walked into the bait 
and as soon as he gave me a good opportunity for a shot I took him again a shot to the heart and lungs he managed to get about 10 yards before he dropped that's the difference between a shot to the heart and lungs and uh, the head the head they usually drop where they are with the heart and lungs they can sometimes run a few yards before the drop I did have another fleeting opportunity as you can see I got the camera onto the bird right and quickly again he was sort of 35-40 yards got the rifle up onto aim and just as I was about to squeeze the trigger away he went but you can't get them all now I'm sure I've been sitting for what three hours or more at this point and I was just about to give up when I got one last opportunity bird landed right into the decoy pattern hopped over towards the dead rabbit he was a wee bit of a fidgeter kept moving wouldn't stay on camera and then it all came together and I put a shot between his shoulder blades into the heart and lungs which dropped him right in the spot probably because the pellet went through the spine okay let's see how we're done that's one magpie two more over there and there's one over there he is there well magpie decoy he's not the most attractive bird he's been in the fridge for a wee while dead rabbit split open uh, for bait though I think it's early in the year and there's a lot of food about still in the field so uh, rabbit decoy is not as effective come the cold wet and frosty winter they'll be a lot keener for it everything was taken with the shot to the heart and lungs I'll just down her over and see this one he got what 10 yards after being struck before he expired but still well hit and dead as a doornail so that's four magpies this morning didn't get any hood at crows they were about but just wouldn't commit themselves but still done quite well well I've had my morning sport so I tidied the place up after myself no point laying it a mess and if you don't want to take the birds home to use as decoys in another day you can always place them into a nice thick hedge somewhere and the foxes and badgers will have a meal of them